Yes, sir. Okay, just to summarize the points that we discussed in the last class. So the stack and the uh, see not setting the different index. So we have written here using the class keyword. The same can be replaced if I use struct. The same, the whole thing works. So the class or structure is same in C++. Just to remember, in class the default is private, and in structure the default is public. So, and we stick to this uh, way of defining a class, where we have the member data and methods organized in public. And private, so we write the uh, outside the class definition. End of the class, we define the different members, the member methods separately. So we talked about. Various ways of creating objects. So, our methods, which are private, these are the public. Ones. So, here we found that we have uh, used. Uh, I mean, in contrast to the previous example, where we used the Sir, your voice is breaking, sir. Where you use the init stack and the clear stack to hello. Sir, your voice is breaking. Can't you hear me? Hello, so your voice is cracking and all. I think there's something wrong with you. Now there, there is something wrong. I think in the it's a portable hotspot. I think the connectivity there is some problem. The institute network is not functioning properly. Now can you hear me? Yes, sir. Is it clear now? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Mm. Yeah, it's okay. better. Okay, so what? I was telling that uh, in the first option, we uh, I just used uh, init stack and clear stack to uh, allocate the space and also to deallocate the space, and which we replaced using uh, special methods called constructors. And here we can see there are three constructor methods: uh, alternative construction or alternative constructor methods, and there is a single destructor method. So what we found is these constructors and destructors performs or the purpose is to do the same thing as that of init stack as well as clear stack. And the only thing is uh, because in C++ we can overload methods or overload functions. So here this constructor whose name is same as that of the name of the class name. It can be overloaded. So we have got 
three copies of constructors one that accepts no arguments one that accepts a single integer argument and one that accepts two integer arguments and because of this it is possible to create a particular stack object in various multi uh, in multiple ways and in different possible ways so these are some of the ideas you can have even more flexibility uh, in your class definition or class implementation so here we have explored the possibility of creating a single stack object with initialization so this is how we do it uh, an array of uh, stack objects which requires one input argument so this basically calls the constructor one so this basically calls constructor So this calls constructor one, and the second one also calls constructors constructor one because it is just the difference is it it uh, declares two stack objects uh, in an array, and they are initialized with these values, and because they are static, they will be allocated from the stack segment. In the third case, it has called constructor two because when you are trying to construct an array of three stack objects, it inputs two values as initial values so this copy the constructor 3 will be invoked okay uh, sorry constructor 2 will be invoked so this is basically constructor 2 so this is fine and then when we uh, call this uh, dynamic allocation are we class a And when I'm uh, ask, uh, trying to do dynamic allocation here by calling new, then in this case, just single element is uh, const, uh, is allocated space with this option of passing two. So here also constructor two is invoked. And in this case, it's a dynamic allocation, but uh, of two stack objects without passing any initial value. So this will invoke basically constructor zero. Okay. And then once it is done using the pointer variable, I can invoke the member methods which are public. So I can write using this pointer notation uh, star asterisk this or PRO this. So this is possible. So this much we uh, explained in our last class. So this is a summary we can uh, in different possible ways we can construct class instances or objects and there are uh, all these possible things uh, all these things are possible sir uh, in uh, yes. sir, uh, while we are um, allocating s3 uh, mm -hmm. so in the array s3 that's uh, being created mm -hmm. uh, is it possible that we can uh, like uh, all the elements are calling constructor uh, two right uh, because mm. we are passing two parameters so uh, mm. is it possible that we are we can uh, call constructor uh, constructor one by passing a single uh, parameter uh, for this like if so that, we uh, give a yes, parenthesis right. and apply a single uh, parameter let's see now that we have done in the in the first case in s2 we have done that here uh, in S3, can we do that also? Like, uh, no, no, it's an array. In array, you have got one possible way of doing things. Achha. Okay, you are telling that, can I mix it up? Uh, yes, sir, yes. Okay, I have not done it, so I have to check it. Okay, we, we can check it here itself. We can check it that I have, I have not done the um, uh, multiple type of uh, constructor call in a single static array that I have not done. I have to check if it supports. I got your answer. So if I write, uh, uh, so I mean, I got a question. If I write S33, then I write 2,20 and here I write only 5. Yes, yes. the constructor want to be invoked. Yes, we can see it and uh, yeah, it should have been allowed, but I don't know whether it allows. I have to make sure that it, it works. We can okay. check it when we switch to the code. Okay. Okay, sir. Hmm. Uh, anything else from this part? Any other question from others?
uh, other uh, students. So what we essentially found here is something like this. So if we have, uh, if we consider this box, so this is the stack. I'm talking about the design, the overall design. So what it says, you have got an inner compartment here inside. And in this inner compartment, you have got the member, the private member data, where you actually specify, say, or store A, top, then size and all this. Okay. So this is a compartment for private member data. And there's another compartment for private member methods. Okay. So here we have got is empty and is full. Fine. And now here we have got the public members. So it's an inner compartment. And in the outer one, we have got the uh, public members where we have the different constructors, then the push, then the pop, then the display and all this. Okay. So we have got the display function, the pop, the push, the stack, stack, stack and all this. And also that uh, uh, the data structure also. So basically it has got uh, no input arguments. So you just can call it. it. It will accept just one integer. It will accept two integers. Push accepts an integer. Pop accepts void. There is nothing it accepts. Display also like this. So what I mean to say is anybody from the outside world, any other user, okay, if he wants to use my stack definition, so this person wrote it, okay? So this person wrote it and this person is willing to use it. So the, he's a designer of the stack. So he's a class designer. And he's the class user or the consumer of the class definition, okay? He wants to use it. So from the main, this person is willing to uh, access it. Now, so this designer has provided this design. He has made, he has actually defined so many uh, um, uh, these uh, methods and he has categorically made this private so that this is completely hidden. You see, it's in an inner compartment. So it's completely hidden from the external world or from the users of this class. But this he has provided as an interface. So this is basically the interface it's a public interface and in addition to that he is also having a interface for what is the value n so n is also here okay so these are all the public uh, the public interface okay so through this public interface, this person can use it. So in fact, when you look into this, so anybody up from outside, when you look into it, uh, look into the design or, or the class, so all these will be completely hidden. So this part, okay? So how much you would like to reveal, how much you would like to hide, that is up to you. That is up to the, that is up to the, just a minute. So anyway, my class is to talk about so that is up to the designer. So he or she could have, uh, you know, exposed these two also, or 
may have hidden some of these also that is up to up to the designer now this choice now in a structured uh, in a procedure oriented programming you just uh, figure out the functions but here in addition to that you figure out how much you would like to reveal how much you don't so there is another layer of abstraction or there is another level of decision making okay so this once a problem is given you have to find out that uh, what should be your policy so your design might be different from mine and or from like that so now uh, so i think that part is clear so so we call it it's better known as interface so the term interface is uh, important interface so interface interface means through which you can basically access that that class i mean what are the ways and mostly interface means this is the uh, these are the methods public methods so interface means it's a public methods through which you can through which access is provided okay you might say that it's a user interface whatever so now let us uh, come back to the coding part okay before that let us see this So what you are suggesting is to just use this one, and let's see if it works. Can you see? Hello. Yes, sir. So it's working. Yes. So if I write uh, S three dot one, so this is one. So S three dot one. What is the display here? S three dot one. S three dot one. So it will be here, displaying the stack. What it should have declared. Uh, uh displayed i have not initialized it right yes so sc dot display should be mm, it will be no values so that's why it is a this this tag okay so if you have done 5 comma 4 now you see displays four the element is has pushed so this works okay so if you provide when you are creating an array of stack stack objects if you provide the initial values uh, with uh, different possible options that are supported by the list of constructors it will intelligently pick up the suitable one and it will construct the particular object right so this works let me see the the problem that okay so just focus on this code this is a very simple one <clears throat> instead of uh, working on with that uh, code with uh, having multiple methods i have simplified it so it's a class xyz a public data member x A, a private data member x public data member y and there are two methods member methods one is update and one is set val update is private and set val is public okay this is a public interface and here we are uh, defining the details of update and set val like this so update is updating x plus plus 
and y is updated by 2 set val is uh, setting the values of x and y and calls update okay so update will do accordingly and will return the value so whatever it does uh, we, we don't care about the details of what is done in the method so here if i write xyz a then xyz uh, this so i am trying to allocate a particular object statically object of type xyz and here i am trying to allocate a single object of xyz type dynamically and i'm trying to assign the base address in p i'm trying to call p. so will it work if that is the if that is the code will it work what is missing here what is missing can you hear me yes sir so will it work just look into the code and tell me we are trying to create objects here a or maybe dynamically allocated object what is missing here will the object be constructed if we run it so we are missing constructor but the object will be created because a default constructor will be provided by the compiler okay so first of all those who have uh, those who are not aware of the fact what uh, from till now what we have discussed what seems to be strange why it, why it should not work i mean it it seems to uh, seems to be like it will not work right because you are trying to construct an object here or here and what are the arguments that you are passing? You are passing no arguments. So your class definition should have supported this construction of the object by providing a constructor which accepts void, right? Is that clear? So to, to have this running, we would expect that the designer has provided something like something like this. Uh, say x y z void and if I write here x y z out Constructor called. So if we do this, so constructor is called twice. Why? So this works because. I have included a constructor which will not accept any argument and this will support both of these two this static creation and this dynamic creation because I am not passing uh, uh, initial values and I, I don't have a constructor also like that so this this thing works right so we know that which constructor will be invoked but you see if we if we uh, comment it out so this constructor constructor if we comment it out so from our understanding what will happen so if you remove any uh, all the constructors and if you are trying to create an object will it work again i'm i'm asking like what should be your intuitive feeling will it work without explicit constructors hello yes sir it will work no this it works uh, that is fine it will work 
but generally speaking i mean if you don't have included a constructor we know that the construction so the compiler does not know how to construct but if you if you compile it it works it works the, the whole thing works so what is the trick or i mean what goes inside is even though you see there is no constructor at all defined no destructor at all but still construction of such objects are taking place so here we can say that the constructor in such a case where you have not included any constructors uh, for uh, explicit construction the constructor will include a default constructor right so the default constructor means if you have not provided anything it will use the default one the default constructor is included by the compiler okay so what is the purpose of the default constructor can the default constructor initialize also no sir because initialization it, it does not know that what you have done what what you intend to initialize it, it it knows nothing about it so the default constructor the purpose is only to allocate space for that particular object that means it will allocate required amount of space corresponding to x and y what is the purpose of a constructor what we found in our last class what is the purpose of a constructor constructor method allocate space and initialize allocate space and initialize so if it is a if you have not mentioned any explicit constructors still your programs will work still your programs will work and in that case it will use the default constructor right and if it uses the default constructor then definitely it cannot serve both the purposes so it will simply allocate the space but no initialization is possible okay so what if we initialize the member variables with some default values then we can do it no that is what i mean so if you if you have not mentioned any constructor yourself so the default constructor will sp allocate space but uh, initialization of the member variables are not possible because you have to do it yourself you have to specify what value you have to, you have to initialize so the thing is but what i want to stress is if you don't have a constructor still the program works but the program works without initialization and in case of a stack in case of that stack object or stack data structure can we do like this something like this if i have removed all the constructors will the stack uh, program work uh, will it work the stack program so no sir because the pointer is not initialized because the pointer is not initialized. so ni neither push nor pop nothing will work so for trivial classes where you don't require any dynamic allocation as a part of the object creation this is fine but if you have dynamic allocation uh, as a part of your construction so there the construction does not allocating space for your member data only you have to have additional dynamic allocation along with those member data then you cannot can you switch it off i mean whose microphone is on please make sure your microphone is on uh, off until unless you are asking questions or interacting with me so in case of that stack one if i try to rely on the default constructor it will not work and that's why it is recommended that if you have got a dynamic allocation in your uh, as a part of your construction of the object because the stack is not constructed properly until unless i have got the array where the elements will be stored merely allocating space for a the pointer or the or the top or size is not enough right so default constructor is fine but in most of the cases it is not useful and you have to write your own constructor and additionally as i mentioned you probably have to write multiple overloaded constructors or in other words you should be providing suitable interface to the user of your code if you are writing the code i am using it you must be have you must be having enough flexibility and that is up to you how you uh, based on your imagination like what you might think that the user is interest will be interested in while creating so you have got no arguments one argument two arguments or different types of arguments it's up to you based on the problem
even if you try to write a matrix class probably you cannot rely on default constructors okay so default means it is just given to uh, have things running but that is not useful uh, in in most of the cases like uh, stack matrix where you need additional dynamic allocation as a part of construction is that part clear yes sir yes, see now if i don't have any default constructor can i have a, a destructor of my own i don't have a constructor i rely on the default constructor but i want to have my destructor is that possible yes sir yes sir so it's not that uh, you need to have a destructor if you have a destructor you have to have your own constructor also so in that means your construction is done in a default way but your destruction when you, when you are destroying things then you then you make sure that you you do so this is possible you can try and see that right now the point is if i if i uh, so is there something like default destructor say definitely it is there because uh, uh, again the point is the default destructor actually does nothing because in any case if it goes out of the scope the space allocated to the data members will be removed right yes sir. so that's a point but sometimes what you know during the construction you may not require dynamic allocation but within your methods you might have some dynamic allocation taken place so even though you create the cons uh, you construct the object using default constructor but you would like to have a uh, custom destructor because destructor can be just one copy you have you need to have a custom destructor which will clean the garbage before it uh, you know destroys the object identity got my point yes sir so that's up to you so better not to complicate things and let us stick to the point that whenever we write a class from now onwards we just write our own constructors i mean as a designer we provide the set of constructors to the user and we always write our default uh, i mean uh, our own destructor also even though there is no uh, deallocation required right so to just to make things complete so the interface will provide a set of constructors and a destructor along with other methods which will be either public or private okay so th this is uh, the thing that we should like to stick to so now once i have this you see once i have this constructor uh, included or or maybe we have a constructor something like this int say n okay and this is say int n so let it be just int so the thing so now we say that okay uh, we know that there is a default constructor provided and i would like to have a constructor with this type which accepts an integer like that so if we have included that will it work will it work now no sir because parameter is not see the point is now here x y z x and x y z b of 4 now what do you expect x y z a without any argument is there a constructor here do you, have you written any constructor no sir no, no sir you have not written but what you can expect that okay you just now uh, we found that a default constructor is there provided by the compiler so you would be optimistic to see that the compiler does it for you also but it will not do it because when you write uh, xyz b4 that means a constructor with integer input it is there so the maybe the compiler will see that okay you know how to write a constructor but you have um, and still you are relying on me trying to do something as default so i will not do that right so the compiler says that if you have Uh, if i have written at least one constructor you should be writing constructors for 
all possible way all possible uh, constructions and i'll not provide you any kind of default ones right so if you if you do that you see it will not work what the point so yes. what i want to what i want to uh, make sure is if you have written even a single copy of constructor you see so there is no ambiguity you have written for integer input type of construction and for that this creation of b will work but if you call xyz a which accepts no arguments you say that the default can be in inserted by the compiler but the compiler is not going to insert it right now so the default constructor is only inserted if there is no constructors specified by you as a designer if you have inserted or written even a one even a single constructor with a different prototype then the default constructor will not be inserted got the point yes sir so yes. again to sum it up the best policy is write your own constructors don't rely on the compiler until unless you are you know it's a very trivial code even though there are not there is no dynamic allocation and you should not skip writing a destructor also just write it uh, write it and do nothing that's all may not be any comments also so just just have it as as it was there so as a part of the interface it is there but we know that it is not required so we can just ignore it the body of the constructor destructor may not have any meaningful things that is fine so this is the point so now we'll we'll come to this point so creating const or uh, constructing objects with default constructors just now mentioned so the compiler silently inserts a default constructor when the class designer has not written any explicit constructor the default constructor only could perform the storage allocation maybe it is dynamic or static but no initialization is possible okay so this is a summary of the constructor destructors the features is it gets automatically invoked and all this i think we have already uh, discussed it in our last class so the destructors cannot be overloaded because it neither accepts or returns values the default constructors may be inserted by the compiler if no explicit constructor method is defined and maybe you can consider the default destructor also gets uh, inserted okay so as a um, as a possibility you can have constructors but no destructor you can have destructor only destructor but no constructors so and you can have both of them or none of them fine so now let us come to something else say if you would like to so in this case if you would like to write a function which accepts uh, where we need to pass the object okay so here if you would like to so this is class okay i cannot write it here so i have got class xyz and say set val sir there is no need to have a destructor when nothing is created no sir no there is no no need to do that but it's a good practice to have it as a part of the interface uh, but Just you said nothing hmm? uh, you said uh, having only destructor is also possible without constructor no, that point i'm asking no no i mean you can uh, you can mention it there but it is not mandatory and if you do it uh, it will work i mean if you just say Uh, see out within destructor it will just give a prompt so what i mean to say you have not mentioned your explicit constructors but you are having one explicit destructor 
that means construction is through the default constructor but the instruction that method will be invoked that we have written explicitly and will say that destroying the object that's all so if we are allocating dynamically uh, like mm -hmm. some uh, members mm -hmm. so will the default constructor will delete the allocation or we need to provide an uh, extra uh, matlab custom uh, destructor for the purpose no, no. see the default ones never takes care of your allocation deallocation whatever it is initialization the default constructor and destructor just does the allocation i mean uh, i mean allocation in static allocation as well as the uh, uh, that removal of that that's all and that we in a static scenario oh okay so, sir because you just now saw that i mean if you if you have dynamically allocated the space for the member data when it goes out of the scope it knows that i cannot uh, I, i cannot refer it back anymore but still it remains as a garbage right yes sir so the default destructor i mean how can it do it uh, so there is no automatic garbage collector included in c++ so this can only happen if there are some automatic garbage collectors so automatic garbage collection how it is possible so if the compiler would have taken care of like it, it could have uh, kept a track of this like whenever it goes out of the scope it finds that okay this is no longer will be used so if it is no longer used so this this space which is not having any kind of uh, it goes out of the context let me uh, deallocate it forcefully even though the user has forgot to do it explicitly so this is called automatic garbage collector so automatic garbage collection is a Uh, is an issue in some languages it is provided but in c++ it is not provided okay sir thank you that's why until unless you do it it will be a uh, in the heap it, it will be a um, uh, collection of huge huge garbage you could have created and i mean you can you can try creating that and see what happens in that uh, determinant code itself so just keep do the allocation and don't deallocate it and see what happens for very large size arrays okay so you will find that the heap gets uh, piled up with those matrices and i mean even though the heap should have been some space uh, there should have been some space left but you don't have a space and it gets stuck and uh, when you make a request using new it says that out of memory what the point yes sir so c++ don't rely on anything automatic so yeah it intention is it helps the user to provide a lot of abstraction but in terms of space allocation and deallocation nothing is automatic here you have to explicitly do it of your own and there are tools like new and delete operators malloc calloc and free you have to make use of them okay in fact uh these are the reasons why you know uh, uh, so th this gives you some additional power also that's why those who have used python uh i think many of you have used python so uh, you are aware of numpy right hello yes sir yes, yes sir so th this is one uh, so it was basically written not uh, since the inception of the python so it was written uh, i mean recently in the sense long after it was uh, the python was actually invented and written so it was just to make sure that the things are fast enough when you allocate it so earlier using list also you could have inserted a list of values but if you use numpy it will use it will make sure that the allocation is done all in a contiguous location and it becomes fast enough <clears throat> so now once you are using python you say that i don't care i mean it it works very fast and i'm happy but the thing is the next day you will be uh, in some other projects maybe you will be given the charge to write something uh, or uh, implement another kind of uh, utility which will be meant for making things faster and without knowledge of memory allocation and all this you will be not be having any clue that what should be done okay so once you have done that for the user it is the user should be happy to use it but if you are asked to uh, overcome the problem without knowledge of uh, memory allocation and what is happening where it is happening you will have not uh, you don't have any other clue how to do it okay so that's why the, at times it is dangerous to use python because it is uh, in some sense it is slower than uh, 
uh, raw C C++ codes where you have the complete uh, hold of your code and your allocation also. But again, for maybe uh, for fast uh, application development, you require something like that where you really don't care about the de internal details. Rather, you focus on the uh, high level algorithm and the application details. OK. So here, if I. Uh, so maybe the details of this is done. Now within the main. OK, let me write the main here. within the main. I have here A. Let us assume that it is supported somehow. A and B. So now I would like to write a function where I would like to pass the uh, pass A or B. Okay. So I can. So in what possible ways A uh, any object can be passed to another function? So this function is not a part of this class, right? It's a normal function. If n. It's a normal function. There is no uh, scope resolution operator used as a part of it. So this is not a member function. OK, these are non member functions. Ordinary function. So in this function, if I would like to pass a, what are the possible ways I can pass? What are the possible mechanisms? Three three possibilities. One is call by value, call, call by, by reference, reference, call, call by, by reference. reference. So if I would like to write this, what does it mean? What I'm trying to do? Call by value. Call by value, right? So why not it is call by reference? Sir, because we are not calling a reference. Because a copy. Just, just now, I mean, just looking into it, can you say it's not call by reference, but by call by value? Uh, sir, no, no, sir. No, sir. You cannot say. Not possible. So let us assume that, okay, so this is there. So this is. INT A, uh, uh, say INT X. Now, if you have got only this much, you can say that, okay, now I know that it is called by. So now you can say that probably it is called by value, right? So it will be X, Y, Z, X, I guess. Sir, it is object, no, sir. Hmm? Oh, sorry, sorry. Yes. X, y. Hmm. So now what are the other possibilities? If I write here, this means this is call by address address. OK, so what I would have written here. Fine. So can I use the same function name here, fn and fn both? Is it possible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Function overloading. So this is possible. In C++, you, you are not bound to rename it with like fn uh, uh, value and fn address. It's not required. If you, if you just write fn is a function which accepts objects either by call by value or call by uh, uh, address, whatever. So this is supported. So th these two are fine, perfectly well. okay. The naming of the functions, and if you pass this, it knows that it is there is no ambiguity. It will call this. If you call this, it knows that it is. So there is no ambiguity here, right? But if I write here, uh, if if I would like to implement call by reference, what should I write here? Call by reference. What should I write? Sir, A only. A only. If I write A only, and if I would like to write here fn xyz ampersand say maybe n, will it work? No, sir. No, sir. Why it will not work? Because there is an ambiguity between the no, and So. Everybody, are you getting my point? 
so the thing is you would say that okay you, you told us that uh, function names can be same if only they differ in terms of the input argument types and numbers right so that that we repeatedly told and now you say that all of these three function bodies they are accepting one single argument but one is accepting the value uh, one is passing the value one is passing the address one is passing the reference so these are the three so there are three ways to differentiate it that is fine but when you are calling it you see these two calling syntax these two calling syntax are ambiguous right why ambiguous because you really don't know what is your intention like uh, i say that i am expecting this but the compiler does not uh, rely on your expectations rather it relies on real facts right and the compiler says that now how can you say that which one i mean whether you want this or this or, so it's a complete ambiguity and the compiler will not allow you uh, to do this right so function overloading is possible this is a nice feature only uh, i mean uh, only if you know how to use it in a unambiguous way right so here this probably will not be allowed in presence of the first one or maybe the first one is not so the thing is uh, as per the interface that we have that we have decided here call by value and call by reference will not be supported if you have used the same function name got my point yes sir so either you uh, you will be asked to retain this one or this one these two options because now the function names are same but if you can change the function name three different names then is there is not a problem the rest of the students is it fine yes sir okay so let us let us stick to this one let us stick to the call by reference and address okay so here let us strike off this part okay and Okay, now now within this uh, within this body if i would like to so this address of a address of a means uh, whatever the address is assigned to p so through that p what i can do i can access any of these members if they are public let it let this be all public right so how i could have accessed it so through this p how i could have accessed say uh, set val i have passed the address of this object and within the function via this pointer to the object a i would like to access a member function what should i write sir two way sir hello Are you getting my question? Yes, sir. So this way we can do this. P R O set val. But when I am passing the reference of A, if I would like to access that member function, which is public, let us assume that both are public. Set to public here. What should I do here? Using this n. which is just a reference of that object a what should i write n dot set to l so got the advantage so now you see uh, call by value is used probably when we don't require when we don't require the object to be changed right but whenever we expect that the object may be updated within the function that we call so we can either pass the 
value of it okay just a minute stay हेलो या सॉरी वाज इंटरप्शन ओके so now if we need to change the object within the function if we need to update so which one do you think can be preferred because both uh, both the options are possible either you can use passing the address or you can use passing the reference but both has the same effect so which one seems to be a better choice you see here you have to write p arrow this and you can simply write n dot self val so whenever you need require updation of the contents of a object inside a function a normal function So, which one should I prefer? The reference one. Hello. The second one, sir. So, we can write that we prefer to use call by reference instead of call by address, right? so from now onwards we will be passing uh, i mean not in terms of the member functions in in any other case also i mean whenever we have to pass objects and we expect within the function where we have passed the object we expect the object to be updated or modified we should always try to pass it by the address not by uh, by the reference not by the address because although both has the same effect but the internally the code will be much more readable you don't have to use those pointers and the asterisks and these uh, arrows and all this right is that part okay fine yes sir so now uh, what we found is we can create c++ structures or classes as you prefer to say we have to design proper interface by hiding as many number of members data and methods as possible from the user and exposing minimally the uh, and making the interface as minimal as possible this is first thing second is if we have some uh, normal functions which will be taking as an input the objects of a particular class type then we should be uh, preferring to pass the reference of the particular object instead of passing the address and whenever we are trying to write overloaded copies even in case of overloaded say um, constructors we have to make sure that the bunch of copies that we write the overloaded copies don't create ambiguities when we call them right so these are the points need to be noted and the rest of the things are pretty simple we can use scope resolution to just define them as it is required okay so now let's come to the uh, uh, one more interesting topic and that then i'll end the class so here consider this case we have a class xyz and let us assume that everything is public so i just it's not a it's a dummy class everything is public i have got int x here which is a member data public member data and i have got 
another function fn so i have not included any explicit constructors and hoping that the compiler will do it if it is required right so i have got int x here and here let us assume that we have got one more say int x which is global uh, global declaration of x it's a member data and what is this this is a local declaration of x local means local to the function and the member data uh, x as a member data now here if i would like to okay so i mean without constructor it will be difficult to illustrate so let me let me add a constructor of our own so we have got x y z i am writing it here itself without scope resolution so i n t n x is set to n so here within main i am then invoking a dot fn with some value say 20 okay so here if i write c out x and c out this what with output can everybody follow the code this is a simple code I have got a class X Y Z. It has got a public copy. Hello, my class is here. Hello. Ah, I am. I am. I am. Class is here. You are who? I am. I am. Class is here. You are who? I am. I am. You are not my class. So here, this is public X. And so, see what I have done. There is a X here that I have declared global. There is a X which is a member copy, and there is a X which is local. So I have created even more ambiguities than it was earlier, right? Earlier there was a global copy and a local copy. Now I say there is a global copy, there is a local copy, and there is a member copy. I mean uh, there is a X which is a part of the member like this. And here this is a constructor through which I am initializing the value of X. Which X I am initializing? This X, right? so here if i create an object a initialize it to 2 then what happens i mean if i write a dot fn 20 so this 20 actually goes here so if i display c out x and this what will be the value here sir 20 so the first what will be the value displayed here so this is simple x this is a local copy and what is the value displayed here sir 10 everybody agrees to this right yes sir now if i have to if i would like to access this particular x value then what should i write can i do this sir a dot x hmm a dot a dot x a dot what is a sir a is actually the object Do you have any a here defined? 
Okay, so I mean the correct answer is it will be it will be using this. So we have to write. So this is this is something strange that we can see here, right? You see this, and if we would like to access that this the value of this x, we have to write. We have to write this. Arrow x. So from and so if we do that, then we will have displayed the value two here. So from this, what can we say? T H I S in small letters. So what is this? It is a. It's a pointer to the class. Pointer. It's a pointer. First of all, because you see, you are using arrow. Arrow means asterisk this or uh, asterisk this dot x like this. So first of all, we can say that this this is a pointer, right? Pointer to what? Pointer to pointer to what? So the current class. No, see, th there is no. What is a class? Does current class object. means anything to you? Hmm? Current object. No, I mean, first of all, tell me that whether does the uh, is class any physical uh, anything that is physical? No, sir. Is class does it belong to anything physical? No, sir. Does it exist? It's just a definition. It's just an idea. That's all. You have expressed the idea how the X Y Z class will look like. That's all. So this is just a merely a idea or a template. Uh, I mean, sorry, you should not use the term template. It's been merely an idea, right? It's a definition. And this has got existence. A has got existence. If you have declared another object B, they have got existence. So if you say that this is a pointer to a class, does it make any sense at all? No, sir. Because you first try to understand stru uh, the structure or class. These are mere definitions. They are mere concepts that you try to define in uh, by writing piece of codes. But if if you have not declared any object something like this, there is no physical existence of the class in the internal memory. Neither in the code segment also it will have allocated something. Got the point? So if you like to have this, uh, so this is a pointer that we know because we are using this arrow operator. So this is a pointer to whom this cannot be a pointer to a class. So that is a absurd uh, say statement. Rather, you should say this is a pointer to a particular class object. So, which object this is pointing to? Sir, a. So, how do I specify it? Now, if I have if I have written something like this, say x y z b five, and then you write b dot f n five. What do we expect in that case? In that case, what do we expect? This statement would have displayed five. Five. So you see, when it is so, when it is a call with a, then it is displaying this one. When it is a call with b, then it is displaying twenty, ten, and five. So now, can you say what this points to? So this is a pointer to. Can I complete the statement? So the current calling object to the object which invoked or called the member function. Because sir, you are using. Uh, yes. Uh, sir, then uh, we also need to. Uh, Write uh, this uh, arrow x equals to x in uh, the constructor part, I guess, because uh, uh, in the constructor we are passing x. Uh, is, x is similar to the member variable, so x equals to x the same. Um, like it won't make any sense because uh, yeah, this, yes, sir, in the constructor. So we should yes, write within the, this within the constructor. You see, within the constructor, 
you have if you are mentioning x so do you have a local copy of x here within the constructor yes sir in text that's the local copy no no in n this was n acha that is n i have mentioned Achha. n here acha local okay. x ja ha yes yes then okay hmm. but if you have say what you can do here is here you can uh, because here you are a part of the construction so here what i can write uh, write is x assigned this x what does it mean within this function we can write this what does it mean what does it mean so the local copy is assigned to the assign the value of the member this member member function right so if i have got in a particular scope if i have got both the member copy as well as a local copy i can differentiate them i can resolve the conflict by using this uh, special pointer this so this will always be pointing to the object which has invoked the member function so if you write here say say if you if you would like to write here see out what do you expect what do you expect here if i write something like this in the main if i write this arrow x hmm error does it make any sense because yes. this is this is a special this is a special pointer which will be pointing to only the object which invokes the member function there is no invocation of member function so here this is so this statement is completely you know absurd statement you cannot so this does not exist here so have you got this special pointer this now the question is now did you write anywhere this is the this declared anywhere in the function no sir is it declared anywhere in the member fun uh, in the list of members no no where it has been declared so how come this this appears all of us are in out of nothing how can this the this pointer appear out of nothing so when we call the member method uh, uh, this will appear i mean we can use this yes so the thing is this actually gets translated or in other words when you when you call any member methods it will be translated something like this fn got it when you are calling this uh, i mean again uh, when when you are having this particular call then it gets translated to b dot fn can you decode something out of it how many arguments you are passing in this member function just one i mean you can see it that it is one one argument right it's integer argument but when it gets translated by the compiler Can you see how many arguments are there now? Sir, two. Two instead of one. Here also two. In and what is the first argument? This is always this first argument is the address of the object which invokes it. Got it? So in when the call is make it, uh, the happening, so it is taking the address of the object along with it, and because of that, this. where we have defined the body also this gets translated to fn what should be the syntax a modified prototype of this it will be in text what will be here hello so it will be here pointer this hmm? this is right 
is that fine yes yes so for every member function we call then the uh, function call would be uh, changed into uh, the yes for every Achha. for every member function ex excepting there are some uh, there are some exceptions that we'll talk about later on so for constructors also then yes for constructors also so uh, for everywhere it will be done like that so but before calling the constructor no memory is allocated to the object so how can we pass the uh, address of the object so we can see that if i so that means if i would if I, if i would write this arrow x it would have not worked right if the this arrow x works that means it has inserted it. and if the this arrow x not, doesn't work that means it has not inserted it. so we can see it in the code itself so the point is if i so if there is a member function and within this if i can write this arrow x or this arrow some member data then we are sure that that member function is appended with this pointer during its call or here also right so generally for all member methods this is done silently and automatically by the compiler and that is why you can use uh, the this pointer and you feel that something out of this is also it appears to be a magic because nowhere you have uh, mentioned the this but suddenly you start using it but this is the actual true fact and that's why this is not a magic but this is done automatically and these are also a kind of a kind of abstraction so the details is hidden by you uh, from you by the compiler so your question will will just see that if i write this arrow x here in the constructor whether it works or not up to this is it fine yes sir yes sir so you can say that okay so what happens here so even uh, in these situations like wherever you uh, you you need really need not have to uh, access so so here say for example in this case if i write x plus plus you are actually referring to the member body right but instead of doing this so if i write here this arrow x plus plus is that same as this are they same can we write this arrow x plus plus yes is this possible hello yes So this is possible, right? So now, whether you unnecessarily complicate the whole thing, it's up to you. Here it is optional. I mean, specifying the member data with respect to this pointer, this is optional here because you're not you are not bound, and you are unnecessarily complicating things. But here in this example, if you because you have already created a local copy also, if you have to access this and this both. you have to rely on this arrow x is that fine sir in the main function if we simply call the constructor with no arguments and and if we try to print uh, c out asterisk this what uh, will it print anything sir means no allocation no allocation now now here if i if i just write without any arguments you have already uh, you have already provided a constructor so it will not work so you have to then remove this part getting my point you do not want to pass any arguments here yes sir no arguments but uh, i i'll try to print uh, the pointer means see out this in the constructor here see how yes, at the yes, top yes sir in the constructor you would like to print the uh, address of the object yes sir yeah so let us see first whether 
<coughs> this is allowed. <coughs> Say for example, for example, this one. I've included here. If I write here, see out this. Are you talking about this one? Yes, sir. So let's see. Or I, I write here this arrow X. What is this one? What is the problem? Is it running properly? What was the problem? Earlier I made so much of changes. Okay, this is not supported now. These two are not supported. So let us make because now I have added a constructor. So the default one is not supported and two of the calls are not allowed. Okay, so make it like this. Okay, I have to add this here. This works now. Let us try here. <clears throat> if I write here this arrow, this arrow X. <clears throat> Are you getting some values here? Yes. In the constructor, in, in this type of constructor. Are you getting values? If I would like to display. The contents of this are you getting values. So what what can be your inference here? So that what you are not expecting, like you say that constructor is meant for allocating space and initializing uh, initialization. So you have to define your statement, right? You, you have to define your understanding. So what is that? What is that we should return? So first mm -hmm. allocation is done and then. Uh, yes, I mean, yeah. before you see, so the point is before it enters the body of the constructor, the allocation is done perfectly. Okay, so this is already done. And this within the constructor is basically about uh, initialization or further dynamic allocation and all this. In fact, this will be even more clear to you if you have used somewhere the constructor initializer list have you used it are you conversant with c++ hello yes sir have you used c++ earlier so have you used constructor initializer list yes sir so in the constructor initializer list the the fact is you can this initialization can be done here also. I mean, here if you write x let's say 50, now see the effect of it. Are you getting the change? Are you getting what I mean? Are you getting me what I mean? Hello? Sir, but the unless the unless it enters the inside uh, unless it enters inside the constructor, it doesn't know how much space to allocate, no sir. Then how no, no, that is what I mean. So you, that's why you, you should uh, refine your understanding. So this constructor code, the constructor says that it is meant for construction. So construction is 
uh, storage allocation plus the actual initialization of those values of the allocated space. But here, so in this body, you basically do the initialization of the uh, allocated space. So in the body, you never actually allocate. So before it enters the body, it completes all the allocation of the data members, either in the stack segment or the heap segment or, or in the static segment, whatever. I mean, the data segment, whatever. Is that part clear? Yes. And because of that, you see now if you so this colon, if you write something here, comma, say y, y say 90. So whatever you write separated by commas, these are initialized list. So instead of initializing here within the body, you can initialize, you can have the initializations here. So to make the initializations happen here, before this constructor explicitly gets invoked, your space allocation should be done. <coughs> so it's a part of it, but in, within the body, it is not done. It's it's done before the it, before the control enters into the body, and that's why you can use the this pointer here because the construction. I mean, it's not the construction, but, but because the allocation of the space for the object is already done, and you can see it through this. You can access it through this also. Is that okay? So can we use initializer list uh, for other member functions? You can use the initialize list to initialize any of the member uh, member uh, data. No, sir. I am asking. Let's say uh, for any random no, no. Uh, member function. No, this, is, no, no, this is called this is called constructor initializer list. So it's meant for only constructor methods. Achha. Okay, sir. Say for example, you have uh, so this is extremely handy. So if I if I got something like this, uh, say something like this, what do I mean here? This is what. Reference. This is a reference, and reference need to be initialized, right? Now you cannot initialize it here because it's just a uh, idea that you write. So you have to, but see, see the see the problem here. So if I if I would like to run the code here, will it be allowed? What it says? Uninitialized reference member. You see, because the reference need to be initialized. But what can you initialize? Even if you try to initialize it here, can you do it like this? Can you do it like this? Does it mean that you are trying to uh, have Z as a reference of Y? Hello? No, so it will still give an error. It will same because it, it means you are assigning the value of X to Z. It does not make Z as a reference of Y. So where is the only place where you can really initialize references? It is here. Is that okay? Yes. What is the problem? Uninitialized reference member. Z is reference of X. Mm, just a bit. There is some error message printing, but it should have worked. Let me just check. Okay, I'll come to it. Maybe something, some syntax I'm missing. Okay, I'll come to it later on. Okay. Uh, I'll check it, check it and confirm. But references also are initialized in the same pattern uh, through the constructor initialized list. But the constructor initialized list is to initialize variables or member data for the constructors. 
so the one that we we uh, actually got stuck or we are confused where whether we can use the this pointer within the constructors also the answer is yes is that fine yes sir and the reason is before the constructor body the control enters in the constructor body the allocation of the space is already done so now you can probably relate why how the default constructor works so the default constructor means the allocation is done and for that you really don't need a constructor body so that's why you can basically dissociate the action in terms of space allocation and initialization fine and here if you write here this just to make sure that it really carries uh, the address of the address of the object here what i'm trying here is uh, this void one so if i write here c out c out uh, a uh, ampersand a what do you expect see so ampersand a when i write it gives the address and within the constructor if i write here this it also gives the same address so that means the this pointer within the member function or within the constructor is actually carrying the address of the object which invoked it is that fine so we can we can see the values value that it contains and it it's really the address of a is that okay so here whatever it displays address of a and here also it displays the same thing this because this is uh, so here this uh, this pointer is inserted here as an argument and this will be inserted in any other member functions also along with constructors and that is why this can be used uh, once you use it it will work if you want to use it and this becomes mandatory if you have created an ambiguity by uh, by declaring a variable with the name same as that of a member function a uh, member data okay yes sir so just uh, a couple of minutes uh, i would like to complete that uh, this this pointer so let us focus on this uh, this one so i have got a class so that will be the end of this class hey okay so class i would say um, let me call it as uh, say demo it will be a very simple one so int say x public because the default is private i explicitly make it as public okay now here there is a there is a constructor which sets a value of x and then i write uh, increment 1 i mean by by one it will be incremented so void and here i write here uh, x plus plus increment 2 void i write here x plus equal to 2 and then i write inc 3 void x plus equal to 3 that's all so within main i create demo a demo a because i need in the constructor some value i make it 2 and then i write a dot inc1 okay and then a dot inc2 a dot inc3 and then write c out 
x. What will be the output? It's a very simple code. Just try to follow the code. Sir, a dot x. Oh, sorry, a dot x. Yeah. What will be the output? Eight. Eight. Because it means initialized to two. Here it got incremented by one, so it becomes three. Then three, then by two, three, four, five, then six, seven, eight. So the output will be eight, right? Everything was fine. Now, if I would, if I would have liked to do it equivalently through this call, a dot inc one dot inc two dot inc three. Can I do it? And if I would have written here a dot x, I would expect the same eight here. So instead of doing this, I would like to replace this in terms of this. Will it, can it work? Okay, I have just missed one point here. So here I, I was just returning void, right? That was the case. So if I completely consider the red part, there is no problem. Do we have any problems? Anybody else? Uh, anybody in the class? Do we have any problems here? Everything is public. Demo, it's a constructor. Then increment one, increment two, increment three. These are uh, public methods called one after the other. And ultimately effect is the value of x got incremented to eight, right? I would have liked uh, and they are all returning void also. So I, I would like to replace it by a single statement where I make a series of calls to in inc1, inc2, inc3 in a single statement. a dot inc1 dot inc2 dot inc3. Is that possible first of all? And if it is possible, how it is made possible? No, sir, I don't think so. It's possible because it's uh, returning void. So it will try to invoke okay, the member I, method I, for void. So first of all, with this return type, it is not possible. So if I if I allow you to relax that it will not be returning void. So then you are free to change this. Now, what you could have done, what changes you could have done, make it possible. Sir, so I will return the object. Then afterwards, this will work. Yes, sir, the reference. reference of the ah, so, you know, so by default, sorry. So by default, even though we have done nothing with it, but we know that the, this pointer has been silently inserted here, right? Pointing to the object itself. So you basically to invoke INC1, you need an object. To invoke INC2, you need the object. To invoke INC3, also you need the object, right? So if I would have returned, first thing is after so after this gets done, a dot INC1, after this gets executed, if I could have returned the object, which object? The A itself. I could have returned uh, this INC1 could have returned it. So to, re to do that, what it should have done? It should have written return. What? Asterisk this. So now you see, I am not asking for the address to the object, right? Or the pointer to the object. Rather, I, I am asking for the object itself. So how to access the ob object? If you have the pointer to the object, it's asterisk this. Is that fine? Yes, sir. Now to get it supported, what what type of return return value you should requ you require here? Sir, demo asterisk. No, only demo. Demo, only demo. Yes, sir. yes, sir. Yes, yes, sir. Only demo. Then, and in case so, if it returns that the same object, that means a. So that A should have invoked this INC2. So here also I can return asterisk this. And here also I can return the asterisk this, but it is not required. So 
but still I can return here return asterisk this have you got the point and here it is demo so do you think it will work hello yes sir yes sir yes it should work so do you prefer to return the value or could have could uh, could you have done it with uh, returning by the reference do you need to really return the value of that a this is means you are returning the value of that object right yes sir so do we need so do we need to return the value I, I, we could have done it like this right we could have returned we could have returned the reference of that object a that also would have worked because if you return a or if you return the reference of a makes a it basically means the same right got me are you getting me yes sir so we actually write this uh, uh, asterisk this but we return here the object's reference not the object itself so then it will it would have worked i'm not showing it uh, in the machine today because almost uh, extended too much so this will work so what is this example so this is an example of implementation of cascaded calls this is called cascading right so what are the uses of this pointer we learned two uses of this pointer what are they hello there are two usages that we learned first one is if we have got a ambiguity we can resolve it using this in addition to that if you would like to implement cascaded calls we have to return this and there is no other way to return because uh, you don't know what the address of the object is right is that fine hello yes, any question yes any question till this point okay i'll see the uh, why the reference cannot be initialized what went wrong i'll check any other questions Sir, is there, is no there any advant uh, advantage of uh, declaring the functions out of outside the um, body of the class? There is no advantage, as I mentioned. So it looks uh, more compact because, as a user, you are not probably interested to know the body of the of each of the functions. But if you see the uh, like the interface, then you know that what what it offers to you, and it becomes like uh, far more readable. otherwise as i mentioned so if you have say uh, 20 30 such functions and each function spans say 50 lines so if you start a class in line number say 10 when do you expect the class definition to end the end, end parenthesis end of the class say after 500 lines or 700 lines is that really meaningful so somehow if you make a mistake so you got you, you know the parenthesis does not match you got completely out of so it will be out of track so it makes sense if you make it more compact so the class uh, it's a, all the prototypes so the actually the class interface is appears and then you have the details of the methods and all this there is no problem i mean you can always do that but it is not recommended hello yes sir got any other questions till this point 
okay regarding the uh, exams i think exams will be uh, i'll try to fix it on coming saturday i mean uh, uh, not tomorrow but next to in the next week uh, saturday and the questions will be objective type it will be either through moodle or through google forms and uh, there will be codes because there is no theory as such in a programming language there sh there should not be any theory okay so theory is uh, you automatically know what the theory is but it will be more of applying the concepts that i discussed throughout and there will be small codes you have to you may be asked to uh, find out the uh, say output of it you may be asked to find out the bug or you know uh, the the line or the point where we might give an error or you may be asked to uh, modify uh, the code so that it becomes correct so you have to fix the bug and there may be sometimes i i give some declaration and ask you that uh, what will be the interpretation of this what it what it actually is meant for something like this so you just uh, whatever i have taught in the class just try to follow the concepts uh, revise the concepts i think that there will be no problem at such and mostly the uh, the number of questions say if there are 30 questions that i said maybe you will be given 20 minutes time the time will be uh, less but let me see the performance overall performance in case uh, the performance is not that good i can think of having uh, relative marking so the highest marks will be mapped to 15 or 25 or whatever it is but let me see the response first but it will be it will definitely be not something like 30 questions and you are given a one hour time and you solve your problem you help your friends the lot of exchanges collaboration went on throughout the exam so that will not be there so try to have your own uh, uh, say portion done and the questions will be shuffled so i would uh, ask you to stick to your part try to solve it of your own in your own way and there will be time pressure but if the performance is not that good i can think of relative marking is that part clear it would be very helpful mm. if it happens on modules or because in google form last year we gave a couple of exams so it was very difficult to navigate amongst the questions see that i don't know because in moodle also if you have got a, some, some, a large number of students appearing in the exams the moodle also gets uh, sometimes create problems because we have it is hosted in our institute server so there may be other issues also see the point uh, the fact is the surfing the questions if it is a problem uh, for you it's a problem for all and if it is a relative marking then you should accept that you all face the same problems and uh, so that's not a problem okay so let so me can see i can all the questions in one page so mm -hmm. that problem will evade so if you put, sir if you could uh, put all the questions in in a single page then uh, no no that is not possible the questions will appear in a random fashion so you might get question number 1 he might get question number 5 and so the sequence in which the questions will appear will differ see so after all there should be some kind of uh, mechanism to see that who is getting things and who is understanding things or not okay so i finalize the uh, the policy or wherever we uh, opt for it may be moodle it may be google form let me see because google form create uh, moodle created some problems uh, last time uh, regarding the access and all this it sometimes becomes very slow and sometimes when you try to submit you, you know it, it creates a lot of problem because when uh, all those 180 students and along with maybe some other batches are also going on so it creates a problem so we'll take care of that problem but in google you don't have that issue google will have have it in its own server so but uh, in google forms there is uh, that one doesn't have uh, auto save or uh, auto submission uh, features uh, in moodle we have that i mean if someone uh, got uh, network problem then moodle saves the previous answers but uh, google form doesn't during the submission time it will be a problem sir because yeah, it sir. doesn't have auto submission feature uh, yeah that i understand uh, Okay, let me see. I cannot uh, let me talk with my colleagues, and I let you know that 
or which option do I stick to? Okay. Hmm. I got your feedback, so let me check if we can do in Moodle itself. Okay. Any other questions? But make sure you try to answer it uh, 